This is, honestly, I have almost 50 years of ministry. I preach regularly in 30 to 50 churches a year, in addition to pastoring. And don't tell anybody, but this is my favorite place. <laughs> Amen, really, really. And it's because of the people that are here. Many of you that are first timers coming, you think that it's this that is what counts, but it's not. This, this ministry literally seeds the world. Amen. And you guys affect other churches. You have tons and tons of churches that you planted. Amen. And every church is doing it. And then this is filled with fruitful people. So give yourself a hand clap. You've made a good choice. You made a good choice. By coming here, amen, even if you're a really crummy Christian, there's a good chance that you'll get at least a couple marbles in your crown just because you showed up here, amen, at reach. Say reach. reach. Amen. Isn't that a good one? Reach. Man, I almost want to preach on it now. Uh, but I've got a sermon. I really, I really did come, and I wrestled with a couple of things, but, but Paul says in... in uh, in Romans 1, and he says that I'm coming to Rome because I want to have some fruit. And I'm hoping tonight that some of you will be changed. Anybody here need a change? You're, you're, you know you're at a point that something needs to happen. Amen. Raise your hand. You say, I need I need something tonight. I need something tonight. And that, that's what faith is, and it's just that simple. And I want to talk to you about the power of one. The power of one. <laughs> Sorry. The clock's going backwards. <laughs> that's really confusing. Amen. <laughs> that's all right. The power of one. Look at the person next to you and say, the power of one. <laughs> you know, it's astounding how much God likes one. Adam, when he goes to fill the world, the universe, he could have just spoken that could all have been created, but he picks one man and he changes the world. The Bible's a story of one, one person, of Abraham, of, of Mary and a Joseph, amen, of, of a David, but not just that, of an Omar Lopez, amen, and a Letty Lopez, amen, that, that they have been chosen and God is doing something in their life. How many say, I'm going to be that person? Yeah. Amen. And I want you to remember that because we're going to come back to it. But this is the power, the power of one. And I, I can tell you this, I have played a part in launching some great ministries. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I pray for you, who knows what could happen? Amen. But there's several other world changers that are here. But I just did a revival last week, and the reason I'm out here, and it, the three of us did it, me and Joe Weidinger and Alec Wilson. And I'm telling you, if I do nothing else in my life, the fact that I prayed for Joe Weidinger and Alec Wilson to get saved. See, when it says reach, who you reach it? <laughs> Amen. And Alex changed three nations of the world, not just cities, but nations of the world. Joe's reached tens of thousands. Amen. And I have seen this tremendous power. Listen to uh, Amen. Roma, or 2 Chronicles 16, 9. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Somewhere... This is what very few Christians lay hold of. God's looking for somebody. <laughs> God's looking for somebody that he can use. The vast majority of people won't let him use them. Most wouldn't follow him. Even when he worked miracles for them, they just walked off. The ones that did were called disciples. Amen. And they were rare and far between. The Lord, it says in Jeremiah 17, 10, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give, and here's underline in my Bible, every man, and we, we could add every woman, to every man and woman according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doing. How's your fruit? Amen today. Amen. How many want to see revival? Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you what revival is. It's very simple. It's when when 
Christians start to get excited about their call. Not about Omar's call, amen, but about their call. Are you excited about your call? You say, I'm not called. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> so think about this with me. The power of one. Amen. I was in a conference in Texas quite a while ago. It was a huge conference on worship. They had a breakthrough. Thousands of people are dancing and, and just going crazy in worship. And I'll never forget this little lady comes up to preach and she prophesies, and as long as I live, I'll remember the prophecy. She said, she said, you think this is worship, thousands of people worshiping God, but he says, worship is one man alone in the wilderness with his hands lifted to God. And I have to be honest with you, at that time, I didn't want to be one man alone. I didn't want to be that one. I wanted to be part of a group. I wanted to be part of something big. But over and over in my life, I found myself to where I had to meet God on a personal level. There's some of you here tonight, and that's why I'm here, that God has an intention, amen, to invade your life. And I believe he could do it tonight. Amen. Say, do it to me. Do it to me. Amen. That's what God's looking for, and literally... Anyone can make that choice, I believe, but you've got, to, you've got to surrender. You've got to begin to come. We are made in the image of God. We are light and salt. You are kings and priests. Amen. <laughs> God counts the hairs on your head. That's what the Bible says. Amen. There's a value. There's something important. The reason we don't feel the importance or we don't see it is because of our own attitudes, our lack of faith, because we just don't trust God. But if you'll begin to live your life like it matters, everything will change. Amen. I know that because of my life. Like I said, when I got saved, I didn't know it, but at the time I got saved, there were four of my friends that within six months got saved who are all pastors today, and some of them are world changers. Not only that, just simply me choosing to come back to the church that I attended, the pastor there, Ron Jones, who's fairly famous around the world, thousand, over a thousand, he's got a church of over a thousand today. He affects tens of thousands of people around the world. And when I came in, sat in the chair, he said, if that guy doesn't come back, I'm going to quit the ministry. But my choice affected his life. Is your, is your choice making a difference. Amen. And it is. It is. <laughs> the worship here. If you'd ever do anything but worship. But my God, you're a great preacher too, so you got to do more than worship. <laughs> you know who I'm talking to, all of you? Point him out. Tell him. <laughs> Tonight, as you leave, tell him, you need to, you need to get more serious. Because wow. I'm, I'm serious. People, people get saved. Because of worship, before I'm sure there's many of you that are here that said that even before the preaching came, because of the worship in this church, you decided I'm going to be a part. Does that make sense? If that means somebody had to practice, somebody had to do something. Amen. And it's true of men and women. Amen. It's not because you have power uh, or, or money or fame. Amen. The Bible's filled with stories of world changers. It says the widow that gave a penny did more than all of the great people around because she did something in the will of God. A young boy gives his sack lunch and thousands are fed. Amen. Because he connected to something that is a deal. The early church was made up of poor people, mainly slaves, and they seeded the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what I'm saying is your actions matter. Look at the person next to you and say, your actions matter. Your actions matter. Amen. And, and I would even challenge some of you. See, some of you need to become more prophetic. I really wrestled even with preaching on that. Amen. And we, we've been seeing it. When I say that, edification, exhortation, comfort. Wow. Tonight, you, maybe even just look around you and see the people that have made a difference in your life. And tell them. That's, that's what prophecy is. It locates you. It, it puts you in the will of God. 
Amen. When somebody doesn't, but yet we as Christians can just be concerned about what we get, not what we give. And here's the key. You ready? (laughs) Oh, you're going to hate this. Not my will, but yours. Say that with me. Not my will, but yours. God. I, I read uh, uh, Romans and Hebrews in the last couple of days, and, the, and all that stood out to me was that, that the whole problem with man is they know God, but they don't do what God wants. The whole problem with the church is that most of us are trying to get God to do what we want instead of us doing what God wants. Wave at me. Am I making sense to anybody? Does anybody hear the Holy Spirit? If nothing else, if we just did that. In fact, in fact, do this. Everybody close your eyes for just a second. Who here, you have some issues in your life that you need to stop? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Oh, my God. What a horrible church. I mean, I made you close your eye, <laughs> but I think there was only one person that didn't raise their hand, and, and Omar should have. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, it wasn't that bad. But what I'm saying is, this is the issue. It's not that we need to understand, but are you ready to let God have your life, yes. to die to your desires? Am am I talking to anybody? Raise your hand if I'm talking to you, because I really want you to go home. I'm here to change you, and I I can't do that. I'm going to do my best at the end of this to push some of you over. Amen. (laughs) And I I promise, I don't know how to pray for people without doing with all my energy. And so I was just accused last week of shoving people over. I said, so what? (laughs) I mean... Sure, I'm trying to pray for you. <laughs> Amen. And I was a song leader one time. You know, when I was a song leader, I got crazy. I literally do. Ellie Wilson was telling me the other day, he said, when my eyes rolled back in my head, he knew we were going to have a good service. <laughs> hey, but I'd wave my hand and I, I'd bounce and scream. Why? Because I was trying to be a good song leader. <laughs> so when I prayed, so anyway, I don't even know why I got on that. <laughs> Amen. Here's what I'm trying to say. You control your destiny. I I don't think you can control the impact you have. You you can't necessarily become famous just because you want to be. But you can make a difference in people's life. You may never know that difference. I think of my dad. I'm sure I've told a story, a little Presbyterian Sunday school teacher felt like God told her to go pick up the sons of alcoholics. And so she drove in Newkirk, Oklahoma, a city of probably 2,500. She would go pick my dad and my uncle up and take them to Sunday school when he was eight years old. And he got saved and he never backslid. And my, my brother has a church of 4,000. <laughs> kind of ticks me off. I'm much better. <laughs> Than, than he is. Amen. Where was I going with that? I really lost it in that moment. What? Yeah, oh, yeah. And so my, my dad, my dad and my uncle, said, I don't think this lady ever knew what she had done. So I can't tell you that you're going to know that, and that's our problem. You have to live by faith. Faith And faith is just trusting God, seeing the unseen, that believing if you start a Sunday school class or you start a Bible study or you begin to say you want to be a preacher or you go to plant a church, amen, you, you may never see the, the full impact of what's happening, amen. Uh, I think of Steve Romine because of Diga being here. If you ask Diga what changed his life, Steve Romine, what was he, 12 years old? prophesied on him. Well, that's stupid right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and yet prophesied on him he was going to be a great preacher and evangelist. And Diga began preaching within months. And he'll, he, he talks about it all the time. Because one person had the guts. And Steve, he, he's passed away, so I guess I can talk about him. But he's, 
He's going to throw rocks at me when I try to get into heaven. <laughs> but Steve came here a lot. And honestly, Steve was only right about half the time. <laughs> we, we used to kid, he prophesied, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I've seen him. I've seen him. You're pregnant. No, I'm not pregnant. I'm not even married. Oh, in this section, somebody, I mean, literally. And yet people would be changed. You know why more people aren't getting saved and being changed? We don't have the guts to be wrong. Here's what I believe. Amen. And yeah, glad you got that clock going. Uh, here's what I really believe. <laughs> Recently, God's been dealing with me. We, we live too much in the flesh. We call it spirit, but it's not spirit. As a pastor, I, I, I can't say all the time, I come in power. Because I don't even know sometimes what the power is. I know what rules are and regulations. I know what it is to have some gifting, to be able to tell a story or do these kinds of things. But I believe the last day revival just may be that the gifts will begin to operate again. Does that speak to anybody? Wave at me if I'm speaking to you, even tonight. Lord, release your gifting. Release miracles, God. Release prophecy. Release, God, word of knowledge and healing. God, release hospitality. God, release leadership in this church. Give us, God, that capacity, not just to do what we can do, but to do what you want us to do. Amen. And so how do we do that? Well, number two, so number one, the power of one, number two is everything you do affects others. Have you realized that everything you do affects others. You say, oh, I don't have any effect. No, that's a lie. You're just not having much of an effect that's positive, that's godly. Amen. But if I, if I were to take an altar call and say, how many of you have, have helped somebody else become a drunk? We won't ask you to raise your hand. But I, I have a feeling there are people here that can say, well, I, I remember all my friends were drunks. Well, you played a part. Amen. And so we literally change everybody's life. So I, I look, I can't, I'm going to have to make you not sit on the front row because I love this guy. How many of you love this guy? God, I just love this guy. Amen. Wow. And, and it's because he cares so much. He does so many wonderful things. That he believes in people. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get back to my notes. Hold on. <laughs> every, every action affects other people. We're leaven, the Bible says. Say leaven. Leaven. You sow and reap. They, in, in Egypt, in one of the tombs of the pharaohs, they found an ear of corn. And some scientists that saw it thought, what if this thing, I wonder if it's still, because it was there for thousands of years, like 3,000, 4,000 years, but it was in a, a dry environment. So they planted it, and you know what? It produced two, two ears of corn. So the one became two after thousands of years. And then another scientist figured out that if they planted those two ears of corn by today, 2023 or 3,000 years later, all the corn in the world could be replaced. You know, the power of the gospel is this, that if all the Christians in the world died tonight and you were the only ones still left, you could repopulate the whole of the Christian faith. That's the power of a believer. That's the power that is in us that can change the world. Amen? Amen? Your pastor, part of why you know he's here today, when he got saved, what was it, 40 people within three months were coming to church. I don't know if anybody here has ever done that. Why not? Why not take the call? Say, I'm going to fill up a row. 
I'm going to bring people because we tend to not think about the impact of our life, but what we get. Again, hopefully I'm speaking to somebody. Amen. And, and I've been looking at this. God's been showing me. I was thinking about it. I know this church a little bit, and there are so many people here that are so powerful and so fruitful. I look at our church as small, and yet there is Danette is in a band that hundreds have gotten saved. None of them come to our church. Calexia is a prophet, prophetess, who travels everywhere and gives words. Our church is just small, but the impact of the people that are there. Mark, who I partner with, has reached thousands of young people. He was a youth pastor for years in part of a band. Ron Grego is going all over and preaching. Amen. That's the power. What could this place be? What could we do here tonight with hundreds of people that begin to fire up? Does that make sense? I mean, if just my, when I came, I prayed that at least two people would say, I'm going to be that person. I hope there's two people that would not just come up to be seen, but who would say, I hear God speaking to me. In fact, do you hear God? Wave at me if you hear God. If you hear God tonight, he's convicting. He's bringing the deal. I think I got this illustration from Omar, so you may have heard it before, but uh, we'll find out in a minute. Jonathan Edwards was a very powerful American evangelist and preacher. And after he was dead 150 years, this guy, uh, uh, A.E. Winship, traced the impact of Jonathan Edwards' life. And Jonathan Edwards founded Princeton, but he was also a preacher, president of Princeton. Every night he spent an hour with his kids. I think he had nine. <laughs> and, and prayed for every one of them every night. Here's what, 150 years later, he had a vice president of the United States, a dean of a law school, dean of a medical school, three U.S. senators, three governors, three mayors, 13 college presidents, 30 judges, 60 doctors, 65 professors, 75 military officers, 80 public office holders, 100 lawyers, 100 clergymen, and 285 college graduates. The fruit of one Christian. Now, there was another guy in the town, Max Jukes. This is a real guy, and part of why they did this study is because somebody was looking into Max Jukes, who lived next door, I think, almost to Jonathan Edwards, his small city, and he had. And part of the reason was that there were 42 of his descendants in the New York judicial system that were prisoners. Can you imagine that? 150 years later, but not only that, there were seven murderers that they could find, 60 thieves, 170 prostitutes, 150 convicts, 519 paupers, and 440 alcoholics. Here's another illustration of what I'm talking about. One of the guys, say Edward Kimball. Edward Kimball is, is a guy that I always think of when I think of this. He was a Sunday school teacher. In 1854, he went and led a 19-year-old to the Lord. That guy's name was D.L. Moody. That one convert would reach 100 million people. And yet, that's only the beginning of the story because Moody was responsible for going to London and Pastor F.B. Myers, one of the great writers and pastors, got saved. And Myers led to J. Wilbur Chapman, who reached Billy Sunday, great American evangelist, who then reached Mordecai Ham, and a 19-year-old named Billy Graham went to the altar. Amen. One guy. I want to be that Sunday school teacher. And and you know what? I can say I kind of have been. Because I probably have 50 people that are directly out of my ministry that are in the ministry today, at least. And hundreds indirectly. You can do it too. Look at the person next to you and say, you can do it. 
You can do it. You can do it. Hallelujah. So we're seeds. You're seeds. And I can tell story after story. People, people even that, and I'm not bragging, but I'm just, I'm just saying, the guy as goofy as I am, as controversial, <laughs> have had all kinds of effect. And I could tell stories. Jan and Sue Idle, your pastor knows Jan pretty well. He's never pastored a church over 20 that I know of. Well, yeah, he did once. He had a church of about 100. But in the last 20 years, he's probably just pastored 20 people, and yet his wife went to Ghana. We just sent her there, met a guy that has led to over 200 churches being started that they have fed orphans, that they just graduated 100 women with sewing machines that will be able to take care of their families in one of the poorest countries in the world. They, have, they just did a, a convention with, I think it was like 600 pastors in Rwanda. They're going into Malawi. One couple, one couple, Albert Contreras, him, him and your pastor know each other fairly well, Albert went for just two years to Africa, and there are seven networks of churches came out of one guy's impact in Africa. We can do it. Amen? Amen. We can do it. Amen. And so, a major key to this is to understand the power of your actions. Let me leave you real quick, real quick, uh, four things that if you want to, how many want to be the kind of person I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to give you four things real quick. Just we'll be done in five minutes probably. Number one, you've got to take the word serious. Word is quick and powerful, sharp and a two-edged sword, pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Word has life and power on its own. Amen. It says in Jeremiah 23, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer? that breaketh the rock in pieces. Amen. So there's something that's so powerful that is in the Word of God. The, I got saved a hundred times. What changed in my life is in 1973 when I got saved, I said, I'm going to take the Bible, and if it's in the Bible, I'm going to live it. And it made me begin to have to lift my hands, and it made me begin to live a different life. And here's the biggest thing it did. I had to have character. Say character. <laughs> I've been a character, but hopefully today I have character. And that means quit lying. Quit, quit lying. Start telling the truth. Have integrity. If you make a promise, keep it. Stay with your wife. Love your children. Am I making sense? Biggest problem, when every revival is a revival of character, every revival is where drunks quit being drunks, and prostitutes quit prostituting, amen, and lives are changed and transformed, and one of the problems today is a lot of times Christians aren't changing enough, amen. Number three, raise the level of the Holy Spirit, say, say raise the level of the Holy Spirit. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, get filled. Amen. You say, I, I've tried. Keep trying. Do it. Amen. Uh, you, you know what? The problem with a lot of Christians, they just don't know what to do. You know what you need to do? This is very simple, gang. Are you ready? Give God more time. Say, so how do I raise the level of the Holy Spirit? Well, start praying. Come Saturday morning and pray. At least 30 minutes will be dedicated to God. Come to all the services. Get involved in everything, Bible studies, all this stuff. It's just surrendering your life to God, letting him take it. Worship. Start singing more. Start praising God. Fellowship with other Christians. Am I making sense? In fact, here's a, how many want to challenge you like challenges? This is going to be a very simple, very basic how many would take a challenge? Raise your hand if you'd say, I'll take a challenge. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand again if you take this challenge. I want to challenge you for seven days, let's even make it easy, to pray in tongues 15 minutes a day. How many would say, I'm going to take that challenge? 
that's going to raise the level of the Holy Spirit in your life. It may bring conviction or judgment, but it will change your life, and it'll connect you to God. You start doing this on a regular basis. That's what we were. That's what revival was, 30 minutes a day at least, an hour a day for many. So how many would say, I'm going to take that challenge? Amen. Raise your hand. Put it up high. Father, we commit ourselves to you. We ask the Holy Spirit to, get, to convict us and remind us, and God calls us to be the people. And finally, join a team. Amen. I'm saying you can do it by being one person, but I'm also saying this, you can't do it by yourself. You have to find your team. That's what you're doing tonight. Most of you are here. Don't let anybody steal the community. Don't let anything be taken from you. Find a team. Find friends that will encourage and help you in the trials and the difficulty. Find a place where you're built up. And this is as good a place as I know in the world. Can I get an amen? amen. You do those four things, and that alone will put you on the track. And then, final thought, be intentional. Be intentional. When you go home tonight, if you get gas, witness to the person that's at the, at the gas station. If you go out to eat, then say something. Ask the waitress if you can pray for her. Start to be intentional doing more of what the Spirit says to do and less of what our flesh says.